Okay, I believe that we are live. Don't worry, folks, this is a test, only a test. For the next who knows how long, I'm going to conduct a test of the ham radio now dot TV West Coast studio. Again, this is only a test. Oh, and it looks like it's working. So I should probably get right into it. This is Ham Radio Now, episode number 382, West Coast Studio Kicking the Tires. And I'm going to kick it all here, folks. So just bear with me. That worked. I'm David Goldenberg, W0DHG, your host. I am live and in person in the west coast studio um i think it got this all built out i think it's all working right spent a lot of time on the phone with uh, gary or on skype trying to get all this stuff to work i got a camera i got a second camera what's that one doing oh right now that's doing a close-up of the uh of the mixer board i got a couple monitors and uh and we're here and we're live and I uh, just wanted to check in with everybody and see how this is all working. So, a uh, couple things. I did just try to ping Gary. I am uh, I know he posted this morning that he wasn't going to be doing a, uh, a drive along. He's on his way to Orlando Hamcation right now. We're tracking him on the uh, APRS. Looks like he's just outside of Charlotte, going 71 miles an hour, headed westbound. And... Uh, I did text him to see if he could jump on Skype and say hello, and uh, we'll just see if he responds. It's hard to see him moving there, though. <clears throat> All right, well, we'll, we'll stand by and uh, see what's going on there. Uh, we'll just cover, couple, cover a couple of other things, including tongue tiedness. Um, I'm live in studio here. Uh, spent a whole bunch of time, got the mixer going, we can do sound in, uh, got a fan fancy new uh, microphone stand to get a little closer, got to work on the spring sound, but I think I've got something to fix that up. Uh, went with a little faster, higher PC, so we're not pegging the CPU all the time, and um, looking forward to doing this, and uh, I hope you all will stick around uh, as we transition from Gary to me, and I hope I'm able to bring you um, fun and exciting content uh, that will meet both uh, his and your expectations in the months to come. Again, this is just a test. We're going to just do a short segment today. Again, I want to see how it looks. I want to see if it uh, goes up to Facebook okay and looks all right. I want to see what the recording looks like here. Uh, but I did want to check in with you all because I knew it's been a little while since uh, I we put out a show. And uh, I don't want to leave you all hanging for a long time. Uh, let's talk about some news. I know the uh, ARL board did publish their meeting minutes. Uh, I've read through most of them. Uh, the understanding I had was that they are slightly redacted. And uh, there's some other folks that are working on the the real notes. And hopefully we'll have that soon. We have invited the uh, My ARRL voice guys to come back and talk to us. And uh, hoping in the coming weeks we'll be able to uh, to make that happen. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've been talking to the Radio Relay International folks. We'd like to have them on a show, and I think we're um, getting the schedule down for that, and it will be pretty soon. In the next couple weeks, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, I'll be going to the um, Southwestern Conference, the Yuma Ham Fest, and I'm actually going to do a show recording there live, um, our Aries DEC, uh, Ruzi Moberry, is going to do a talk on um, on Aries and the, some of the services that we provide and talk about some of the equipment uh, and other stuff that we do. And so I'm going to try to record that. And I'm going to see what it's like to uh, produce a show from the field. Just trying to keep all these things going, get my feet wet. Don't guarantee I'll be covering uh, all the big hamventions. I'm not sure I'll be able to make Dayton this year, but who knows what will happen in the years to come. Uh, so those covers those things. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, news from um, 
sad news from Beauvais. Uh, I guess they got out there and um, the weather was rough and uh, weren't able to get the helicopters off. And after a day or two of circling the island, I guess they had some engine problems. And initially they turned back and looked like the last report that I saw was not only had they turned back, but I guess the captain had decided that it would be safer to try to um, make land and head for South Africa, which was closer. So they did a they did a 180, and then they did a more of a northbound turn. So um, I know we covered them a, a couple episodes ago, and I'm, I'm hoping when they come back, I'm hoping Gary will still be able to do some kind of documentary on on their experiences there. Um, but we'll hope we'll be able to have them live on the show and and get to talk about. Um, how the trip out to the island was and, and what kind of challenges they had along the way and what happened when they did get there uh, to cause them to have to cancel uh, the expedition and, and maybe what kind of plans they have for the uh, coming years to maybe try to go back and do it again. What else would we want to talk about? Oh, so um, I need your help, audience. Uh, I needed some ideas. I need to know what kind of stuff that... Uh, that you want to hear about. I have a bunch of ideas. I've been kind of building my own list, but uh, I, I really am interested in your feedback on uh, how I'm doing, what's good, what's bad. Um, if you have uh, folks that you know out there that you think would make a great Ham Radio Now episode, uh, you know, drop me an email, my call sign at ARRL.net, and, um, or hit me up in the Facebook uh, world. And give me an idea, make a contact with me, or send me somebody's information. And uh, I'm looking forward to reaching out to some of those folks and kind of crowdsourcing what we do uh, over the coming year and years. What else can I tell you? I really guess that's it. It's been a lot of fun making this uh, wirecast thing work here. Um, it has been some challenges. Uh, built out a PC, but it didn't turn out to be enough. And so I'm on, I'm on box number two, and we kind of went whole hog. Got a big beefy Xeon processor. I think it has 10 cores and 32 gigs of RAM. So as I'm looking at the settings here from Wirecast, looks like the CPU is only at about 16%. Uh, I do see there's three people uh, in the Facebook audience uh, watching me, and uh, I really appreciate you tuning in. And uh, only eight drop frames since we started recording. So um, it sounds good, and uh, it seems to be working okay. Some of the video tests that I've looked at, um, they actually look pretty good, and uh, so we're just going to keep at this. Um, and Mark, uh, yeah, I, I have to email Kelly. Uh, it's been so crazy around here. I had the flu, and most of the month of January um, was kind of a NyQuil fog for me. Um, but that's definitely one of the stories that um, I'm looking forward to following up on. So I think without further ado... I'm going to make it a short episode. Actually, i tell you what I'm going to do. One more time, I'm going to try to get a hold of our friend Gary. Uh, actually, you know, let's just do this. Let's just go right to Skype and see if he answers. I know he said he wasn't hooking the car up with all of his regular recording equipment, but um, but maybe. Maybe he's got his phone there. Hey, David. Hey, Gary. How are you doing? All right. Doing good. You're rolling down State 95. Excellent. Hey, so before you say anything, I want you to know that we're live both recording and in Facebook. And I, oh, wow. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm home. I'm, I'm running from the West Coast studio. I recorded about nine minutes worth of content. And I thought, you know, since you weren't doing a live show, maybe, uh, maybe we could get you in here uh, uh, live anyways. I got you up on um, the APRS uh, FI. Oh, yeah. Looks like are we on the most important amateur radio program on the internet? We are, you know, and thank you because I missed that when we started. Yes, yes, this is Ham Radio Now, the most important ham radio show okay. on the internet. I, I said that when you do the show, you can decide how you want to do it. I, no, it's just ch yeah. No, I like I like doing that. I like doing that. So I see you're um, you're hitting 71 miles an hour uh, outside of Charlotte. How's the uh, how's the trip going so far? 
I yeah, actually I'm uh, deep into South Carolina, so oh. I, I guess I haven't uh, had a uh, an APRS digipeter anywhere near me in a while. I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, and it is pouring rain, so oh, no. it is not exactly fun driving. Uh-huh. I'm not sure what uh, Skype is picking up off the windshield in terms of uh, clatter from the rain. If I, if I don't say anything, maybe you can hear some. I I can uh, I can I can definitely uh, hear it. It wasn't sure if it was road noise, but uh, okay, rain rain that works. So you're you're um, into South Carolina. That's good. How many uh, how many hours do you think you got to go? Well, I'm not going all the way to Orlando tonight. I'm okay. going to uh, someplace in southern Georgia, well, so- southeastern Georgia by the coast. Uh, and then I'll finish the tr- There's a motorcycle going by. Did you hear that? I heard that. <laughs> that guy is having no fun at all. Yeah. Um, I'll finish the trip to Orlando tomorrow. And uh, it's, it's going okay. Uh, Mark Cartwright will be bitterly disappointed. I am not doing a on the road vi- uh, video um, as usual. Everything was last minute. Uh, I, I was experimenting and setting up a new way to do the studio in a booth using uh, Wirecast on my laptop, and as many webcams as I can make work, and it turns out I can only make three of them work on my laptop, so I've got multiple guests in the studio in a booth, assuming that it all works down in Orlando the way that it uh, worked at the very last minute last night as I was testing it at home. Um, then uh, we'll double some people up on camera, so I'll have two, two cameras shooting people and one uh, on a wide shot to pick everybody. So I'll get as many interviews and stuff as I can, and hopefully very simple uh, with all the titles put in and uh, ready to upload on YouTube instantly. I don't know if I'll be able to do Facebook Live. Um, depends on whether my phone can get a good enough uh, signal with all the... Uh, the signal's strong, but there's going to be a lot of competition with all those people, so we'll see. I'll give it a try. I'll have to go see what you upload so I know what uh, what the episode uh, number what, is. What episode number to put? Up. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to. I'll, and, I'll, and this will be a, a good trial by fire for me to figure out how to get it up on the web page. But uh, I think somewhere I've got the password and, and stuff for that. If that's that's the hardest part, actually. Yeah. At least that once I get the show done and, and uh, upload it onto YouTube, uh, time it takes to set up the website and to all the other Facebook and Reddit and uh, Twitter, all that stuff uh, seems to take about as long as it did to do the episode. Uh-huh. So, somebody else must have that figured out better than me. Right. Well, well, we'll see what we can do to, to streamline it a little bit. And I'll have to, like I said, I'll have to figure out if I know where all the passwords for all those things are. I think I, think I can get it in the YouTube I uh, I know I got Facebook going and, and Mark Mark Cartwright's in the chat room, uh, watch, watching right now. Um, and I'll have to see see if I can remember how to get into Squarespace. We'll we'll try that out. I'll, let me know. I'll uh, get you back in if uh, okay. if we need to. So so what have you been doing up until when you called me? Uh. You know, I, I just did a quick intro. I you know I, I told folks that um, I was you know super appreciative that they're going to stick around and hopefully watch me do whatever I'm going to do and um, talked a little bit about you know upcoming stuff. I'm you know I'm going to go to um, Yuma Ham Fest next not this weekend but the following weekend and uh, I'm going to record our uh, DECs giving a talk. So I borrowed a camera from somebody. I'm going to record that and see if I can do a a show from the field. And um, still talking to the the radio relay, relay folks um, to see if we can't figure out a, a different date. Uh, what else was I talking about? I guess another another note to the my ARL voice guys to see about a date from them. Uh, talked about uh, the the sad news from uh, the South Atlantic. 
Uh, oh, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, and and you know now now they're headed to South Africa instead of going back to South America because I guess I guess whatever issues they ran into with either worried about icebergs or the engines uh, holding out, so uh, they're headed for land. In a couple of days, they'll get there. So I, I really hope we could get Hal back um, uh, when he's home and uh, and at least have him on a show. I don't, I don't know what it means for your documentary if you're still going to be able to to do something. Oh. There won't be a documentary, of course, but um, I'm I'm kind of hoping that that uh, Bob Alfin and and Hal and anybody else with a video camera is documenting everything that they've been through. Yeah. And well, we won't be making a DVD, I'm sure. Um, I'll uh, I'll make them a, a I'll edit them a video that they can put on the website. Uh-huh. I don't think they'll have anything to sell. Maybe you know, maybe Bob will have a different idea. I don't know. Sure. Uh, but if um, if he if he doesn't think that they'll be anything to sell it, I don't think there would be. Uh, I'll make them a video of whatever they've got, and put it on the website, and, and people can learn from that perspective what uh, what the adventure was like, sad as it is. Yeah, you know, I saw I saw some little. I don't know how they're how they're uploading them. I guess it's over. Um... Uh, satellite, but they've uploaded a couple little clips here and there of the boat in the in the heavy seas and such. So I'm hoping that they are um, they are catching some video along the way. I, I'll assume Hal's drone never left the boat with all the weather they've been talking about. <laughs> I don't think I would uh, fly a drone off a boat over the open ocean. Yeah, probably not a good idea. I'm not rich enough for that. Right, right. So uh, those are some of the things. You know, Mark Mark Cartwright sent me a. Uh, um, a connection with um, someone who does um, weather stuff, and I believe she was a ham too. And uh, that's one of the things I got to follow up on. But you know, as I was saying, I I lost most of the month of January to the flu, so I'm back and feeling better. And it looks like uh, the reports are from uh, the chat room. There's no lag, and it sounds pretty good. So I guess I got this all dialed in, and and uh, you helped me get this all up and running, and that's awesome. Good deal. I did. Um, I looked over the uh, the minutes from the ARL uh, uh-huh. board meeting, and uh, I didn't go back and look at the uh, code of conduct to see which specific paragraphs they had uh, redacted uh, board or taken out. And uh, uh, I didn't hear myself slap back here now. Yeah, sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> Keep your fingers off those knobs. Yeah, yeah. No, I was I was trying to get the Facebook room. I, every time I try to look at the Facebook chat room to see if it upgrades, I click the video and then the video starts to play. Um. Okay. In theory, you can turn that down. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do. I just have to remember that. In theory. So you were looking at the at the Maya Errol voice stuff for for their um, commentary. I haven't looked at their commentary on it yet. I, well, the, the last time I looked, a couple of days ago, I didn't see any responses to yeah. it. But what I did, what they uh, they talked about redacting a couple of specific uh, paragraphs, and they talked about them by number. And I didn't go back to the code of conduct to see what those numbers were because I was just looking at it on my phone, so it wasn't inconvenient. But, um, maybe. I'll be able to get some ARL people to come over to the booth and uh, talk to me uh, down in Orlando. What do you think? Uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed so you can make that happen. <laughs> but it would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice, but I haven't having a feeling maybe maybe uh, maybe not. But you never know. You never know. Uh, well, I'll, you know, I'll I'll be positive about it and say uh, they're they're welcome to come by, and I'll I'll go by their booth early. And uh, I don't have a lot of stuff lined up right now, so um, I'm, I'm kind of hoping to get fairly busy. But that usually means uh, four or five interviews, which certainly doesn't tie up the whole weekend. I'm not planning on shooting any uh, forums. Okay. Is there anything you're, uh, you're going to hope to, to see? Any equipment you want to look at or any uh, cool technology? That doesn't usually happen in Orlando. Okay. Nobody introduces new stuff down there. I'll, I'll go by the uh, uh, the wireless holding folks, the DV4 mobile, that does everything VHF, UHF um, radio that 
they've been promising for several years and uh, it was going to be well available in 2016 uh, maybe 2017 okay 2018 and they're not even saying for sure so i, I don't know that, that they'll be exhibiting but they were last year and see uh, if they're still promising I, i've had people email me to say well you know too bad that radio is not going to be produced and i uh went back to their website and it still says well 2018 and went back to the person that said too bad it's not being produced and said well what what do you know that, <clears throat> that i don't know that they're not announcing I said i can't say uh-huh and okay. what you know there was the connect Systems 7000 radio that was supposed to do d star and dmr and that was I, i've been on that waiting list for four years now i think another vapor they, wear, vaporware still, product are they even still promising that i no, i don't think so I don't think so. I think they took it down last year or the year before. Yep. And a handheld, that's going to be a trick. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, both of these are, well, Connect Systems, I'm not not sure how much it is the engineering that they do themselves. Um, When I talked to him, the the one and only interview that I did, I got the impression that he was doing some of the engineering, but he was not an engineer at the level it would take to do that. And uh, the the DV4 guys are doing all their own engineering. And it's a small group, and it's not volunteer, but no one's doing it full time. Mm-hmm. So it's not like they've got a, uh, a really deep bench of people developing this very difficult stuff. Right. Well, you know, in Connect Systems, um, I know some. I know. I know some folks that know the guy, and, and actually they're here right down the road, and maybe that would be a, uh, maybe that'll be a show one day. I'll go down there because I think they're maybe a 15, 20 minute drive for me. Um, yeah. Where their where their headquarters is. Uh, and I think they mostly do uh, commercial stuff, anyways. But you know, Ham's Ham's, and he's a Ham. The guy that owns a company is a Ham, and it's kind of an offshoot. Jerry Wanger, I think is his name. <coughs> We still there? We are still here. I'm okay. hearing. I'm hearing a lot of. I hear a lot of pounding on your side. <laughs> no, it's actually what the the rain has let, let up a little bit. But I'm doing 65 and turn the noisy car. Uh-huh. And my phone is uh, probably a foot and a half, two feet from my mouth, so I don't have the headset on. Just hollering into it. You're you're blaring out my stereo speakers, so I would be surprised if you're getting some uh, slapback from that. Yeah, it's hard for me to tell. Um, you know, I hear you good. I don't hear myself back a whole lot, but you know, I'd never know. Somebody in the chat room can tell us if I'm coming back through double. So here, what I should do is, uh, are you set to see my video if I turn that on? I, yeah, if you, uh, yeah, if you turn your video on. I'll just do it for a second. Okay. Um, and I'll let's... switch. I'll switch to you right now. You're switched to a dead screen. But I'll put you on there. Oh, there's Gary. Let me see if it's gonna work. Uh, I'm trying not to drive off the road here. Yeah, no, you. So don't look at me, Gary. Right. You, yep. you look at the road. We'll just look at you. There's Gary. Well, not for very long because I don't want to pay uh, oh, that's Google Fly for a ton of bandwidth. Got it, got it. Oh, see, so I got the side by side view going, and I got you by yourself. All right, well, I'm working this. We got to get All you right. a, a, a a landscape that's a, that's camera your, mount. That, that's your on the road video there, Mark. All right, we did it. And now I'm turning the camera off and uh, getting back to bandwidth I can afford. There you go. All, all thousand feet of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Google Fi just announced their uh, supposedly unlimited bandwidth deal. Uh-huh. And what it, what it means is if I get up to um, six gigabytes, then between there and 15 gigabytes, uh, it's all the same price. So I might as well chew it up like crazy. But I, once I went to Google Fi, I put myself on a bandwidth diet. Uh-huh. And uh, I managed to live within a gigabyte or two um, every month, which knocked my cell phone bill from 100 bucks a month down to about 40. Wow. And I'm uh, not worried about that at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we have I, I have had the same Sprint plan that I'm on for 15 or 18 years. And we have the unlimited, you know, we have 
text talk and data unlimited and they still haven't haven't got it. every once in a while when we go out of town when we go into roaming the throttle us down at a certain point but otherwise in here it's all we can eat and my kids eat a lot they they, <laughs> they they go through a lot of data i look at the report every once in a while and uh gigabytes and gigabytes yeah i've, I've looked at um i keep looking at, at the other plans and uh Google Fi still works the best for me. Yeah. Uh, I thought that I, well, I was going to have trouble with this phone because the battery was going bad. And it was exhibiting your typical lithium ion end of life where it would look like it was doing okay until you actually asked it to supply some real current. And then it went, oh, no, I'm dead. Boom. Um, but the battery metering, the battery indication, could, didn't know what to do with that. So it would say, you got 50%, don't worry, everything's fine. And then you would turn on the camera or something or ask it to play, play a podcast. And it would say, oh, I was wrong, you got nothing, I'm shutting down. <laughs> but that's just typical lithium ion end of life. Yeah. <laughs> And that's not a user replaceable battery. It, well, in theory, no. And I didn't replace it myself. Uh, there's, if you go online, you'll see plenty of YouTube videos with people showing how to replace it. And it requires uh, and all the sponges and melting you know, glue. Yeah. And uh, so you can buy the battery for 20 bucks or so and then do all the rest of the work um, or for 100 get it all done by somebody who's got all the tools and knows how and the phone came back as if nothing had happened now there were plenty of horror stories on reddit and other places that said yeah i had the battery replaced and it still after a couple of weeks it was still a problem so I've been about a month now in, in uh, heavy use, and it's doing fine. So I don't seem to have that problem. In fact, yesterday it was running for 12 hours and of intermittent use, but playing a lot of podcasts on audio. And, uh, and I said, i got seven more hours to go if you want to, you want to go for it. So... Um, it's it's doing what you would expect from a cell phone battery to do. But what I had to do during the, the last few months of its life was to be always near a uh, an external backup battery. And so I've, I've made that a habit. There's always one standing by. Right. So, of course, just as I get this phone resurrected, Google Fi announces the uh, the Moto X4 price drop from four hundred dollars to two hundred and fifty dollars. So that would that would have been the direction I would have gone if this phone was unrecoverable. Right. And I'm still thinking about it because it's it's the only non Google Google Fi phone. And by the way, if anybody out there decides they want to do Google Fi. Tell me about it first, and uh, you can uh, you can use me as a referral, and I'll get something free. I don't know, a month of service or something. Is that is that available everywhere? Uh, Google Fi. Yeah. Uh, in the U.S. Oh, okay, I had no idea. We'll yeah, check into it. Early on, it was a. Uh, by uh, by invitation, but you send an email and you got an invitation. That's why I first got in. Now it's it's available for anybody, but there's only a limited number of phones that can work with it. Um, I don't think the Nexus phones are on the market anymore. So the Pixel phones and that Motorola, Motorola and Moto X um, are the only phones that work with it, and most people like. Uh, a choice beyond that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's got some limitations, but as a service, pretty good. It uses Sprint, T-Mobile, and U.S. Cellular. And uh, driving down Interstate 95 here, I'm not likely to lose service, but 
price. It definitely has better service out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, interesting. You're getting really noisy in a little R2-D2. Uh, maybe I am uh, losing signal here. Yeah, it was, it was just a couple. There were a couple bits of it, but it was mostly more the noise. But you're getting a little noisy. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting a lot of slappy rain on the windshield. Too. Yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. Either that, or you're driving over. You're driving over something. All right. Well, you know, it's this is a half an hour. All right. Phone and, and uh, talk right into it. Maybe that works better. Yeah, it's a little better. I worry about you driving though. Well, I can't see out the windshield when I do this, but you know, for ten or fifteen seconds, the road is pretty straight. Yep, yep. All right. Well, then let you know. Let's 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 close it up, and uh, I'll have I'll have one in the can I can put under my belt. It's we're at about half an hour, and um, it was more than I thought I would get out. Um, and only half hour. People are gonna wonder what's gone wrong. What's that? Only half hour. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, I I told them when I opened when I opened the show, I told them that was this was a test, only a test. So. Yeah, most of my uh, quick tests run about an hour, but. Uh huh. You're you're still getting your uh, sea legs. Here, yeah, so. and well, and I have and I have all those other things that I got to figure out. But uh, hey, I did it! Yay. <clears throat> so. Stand. I can't. I can't wait to get to the hotel tonight and watch it. Yeah, take a look. So, so tell them who you are, Gary Pierce. Wait, I'm going to put you up on the Google on the APRS. Tell them who you are. Uh, I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. Uh, what are you calling me now, founder? No, I, I, I. Oh yeah, founder. Yeah, founder. Flounder. Founder. No, I spelled it right, didn't I? F O U N D E R. Yeah, founder. I still I, have you I, as editor, host, and producer. Okay. And founder, because you are the founder, right? We'll, uh, I believe I am. Yes. We'll we'll change it up as you as you uh, want. And uh, and I'm David Goldenberg W zero D H G. What what my preferred title would be host emeritus. Host emeritus. Okay, I'm on that. You just have to hope I spell it right. <laughs> yeah, host emirates. Yes, right. All right, you uh you get to do the lead in for the for the close. Ah, over. And out. Woo! Did my first show, Gary. Oh, outstanding. I'm impressed. Yeah. Now, I discovered exactly the, the trials and tribulations you were going through trying to make um, the mixer work into Wirecast audio. Uh-huh. Oh, you had similar it's problems? A, yeah, and... Uh, and, and what I found was hanging it up was uh, switching the uh, the Windows audio record to stereo um, 48k 16-bit. It was defaulting defaulted to mono something, and Wirecast didn't like that at all. So I got selected. It was it would say, yeah, that's that's the codec. That's everything you're using to your USB. But uh, I'm not hearing anything. Well, Windows was happily bobbling along with audio. And then as soon as I switched it to stereo 16-bit, 48 kilohertz, Firecast saw it. Oh, but it took me at least an hour to get there. Well, like like I said, I told you I had that I had a couple of days there where I was ready to throw this all out the window. Yeah. I was thinking my, I, one of my kids is going to get a really awesome Minecraft PC. <laughs> And I bought a uh, a second uh, mixer just like the one I sent you. Uh huh. Just in time because the old one died. Oh, did it die? You know, when we were when we were playing with it last week, uh, the light the yeah. light was flickering on and off. That power light. Yeah. Yeah. And when I I pulled it out, I, I figured, well, I'll just put the new one in the studio and use the old one on the road because it's going to take a bit more pounding. So I tried to set it up and use it. Now it's getting no audio out of it, and uh, the LEDs weren't working right. And I got hum. And so, all right, I'll put the new one in and see what happens. And everything was fine. But it, uh, yeah, basically a two hundred dollar mixer. Yep. If you get two or three years out of it, buddy, that's fine. Yeah, that's not so bad. I I would think the the bigger thing is going to be the PC. You know the. The eight hundred or thousand dollar PC. You hope you get a couple years out of that. Yeah. Well, my laptop is a lot more than that. So. Yeah. 
Although, the mistake I made was I got a workstation and not a gamer. So, if I'm going to... For the new show, if, uh, if I can make this uh, laptop wirecast system work right, I will probably buy a gaming laptop. You got so it. It's got you know, serious... Yeah. Serious uh, video card in it. You know, the, the thing I wonder about that... Um, the the differences for from the couple that I looked at yeah they've got the cool awesome gaming card and you'll get a, a nice GPU but a lot of those don't have the the xenon processor where you can get you know six or eight or ten or twelve cores and I think that's a big I, I'm not really I'm not really fully sure in the new box I got is it, is it the ten cores I got and the thirty two gigs or is it the two gig you know really high end video card I put in there. But uh, think, it's probably probably both. Probably um, both, yeah. Look and see uh, uh, how stressed the processor is. Well, that's you know, that's because... that. Yeah, that's the thing. I've been watching the whole time, and and like right now, it hasn't gone above sixteen. Sixteen percent, the whole time. Yeah, because I was uh, playing playing with it uh, yesterday. Uh, some things that I was doing took it right up to a hundred percent. Uh huh. Um, and that's and that is a Xeon uh, processor, you know, three gigahertz Xeon processor with uh, six cores, and that it should have handled things yeah. very nicely. So it was really stressing it. Oh, huh. interesting. Um, so I'm not sure, and, and the uh, the webcams should not stress the USB buses much at all and why they seem to have a limit of uh, two per bus at most I don't know and the Wirecast folks were saying one per bus yeah that's what I read that's what I finally read because I've been trying to still troubleshoot the getting a third camera on there and I ordered one more um, USB 3 card because I still have one slot open but uh, yeah but that's what they said is you really kind of just have to do one per bus. And I said, even with the USB 3, and they said, yeah. Oh, I think we lost Gary. Oh, let's see. It's on hold. Gary, are you there? I'm not sure what on hold means. I didn't do it. Oh. You're back. I'm back, yeah. Uh, Sydney was calling me, and I couldn't figure out how to answer that. Oh, yeah. At least the phone wasn't uh, wasn't properly responding to the button pushes. Yeah. Well, I get Cindy takes priority. Well, I'll call her back in a second. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, um, uh, you know, you, you just keep driving safe, and uh, we'll touch base. I don't know. I, I'm I'm actually out of town for the weekend this weekend, but uh, you have fun at Hamvention and. Uh, yeah, I was going to bring you in on the uh, on the uh, studio at a booth uh, uh, if I got, got a decent signal. But is that uh, is that Friday or Saturday? Uh, fr it's both. Okay, fr Friday Friday during the day, I could probably make that work. I'll right, be well, I'll be prepared. Okay, cool. Uh, see how it goes. It also depends on whether I can get a uh, a Wi-Fi signal. Good or, enough, uh, well, not Wi-Fi. I'll be off the phone. Oh, right, right, right. So, I mean, the phone will be Wi-Fi, but it'll be sitting right next to the PC. It'll be a cellular um, broadband signal, and uh, there's a, the tower's right outside the place, so I get a plenty of signal. Uh -huh. The question is whether they'll have capacity for me to do a couple of gigabits, and uh, a couple hundred megabits anyway, and we'll see. Okay. All right, All right well, it sounds like fun. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's a momentous day. It, yeah, it, what, quite the journey. Quite the journey. <laughs> All right, well, you be safe. We'll talk to you soon. 7-3. All right, Facebook, thank you for hanging in there with us and, and joining us. And, uh, again, please comment and let us know what you want to see. And uh, I'm going to hang up now. 7-3 all. And stop the recording.